significance of a clean washroom is thus not only aesthetic but also for health and hygiene reasons. A filthy washroom is a breeding ground for germs that can infect anyone who enters or even comes into contact with elders spreading a variety of diseases. Washroom A step-by-step -step guide to clean washroom. Remove everything that does not belong in your bathroom. Remove anything that does not belong, such as clothing, cups and trash. Also, remove any small side tables or movable storage cabinets so you can clean underneath them. Fill the toilet bowl with bleach or other disinfectant. Place the toilet brush inside the bowl to help sanitize it for cleaning. Allow the cleaner to sit for 10 to 15 minutes before using it. To ensure proper ventilation, keep the door open and the fan turned on. A tablespoon of baking powder in a quart of 75 by 25 white vinegar and water is a green alternative. Dust from the top down. Remove cobwebs from bathroom corners and brush other dust and dirt directly onto the floor to be swept up later. A duster is ideal for this, but a broom can also be used. Place a soft, clean, dry rag over the bristles if you have delicate wallpaper. Apply any scrub powder to especially dirty areas. On particularly dirty areas, use any scrub powder. If you have lime and buildup in the tub, sink or around faucets, lightly dampen those areas and sprinkle with Comet Scrubbing Powder. You can work the grimy patches loose and speed up the cleaning process by letting it sit for 10 to 15 minutes while you attend to other tasks. Always read the label to make sure you're using the right product and won't harm your surfaces. Before you use it, test it in a non-visible area. Sprinkle baking soda on surfaces and then use vinegar to clean them for a more environmentally friendly option. Allow the mixture to sit for 10 to 15 minutes before wiping away the vinegar and baking soda with a damp cloth. Wipe the walls, windows and or ceiling. If there is mold on the ceiling, start by spraying a water bleach or disinfectant solution on it and letting it sit for a few minutes. If the walls are tiled, repeat the process there as well or use another cleaning product. Scrub the tile surfaces you've sprayed with a sponge or a cleaning rag Rinse it thoroughly to remove any stripes, then pat dry with a clean rag. Cleaning walls and other surfaces with a 50 to 50 vinegar and water solution is another excellent choice. Simply be careful not to combine vinegar and bleach because this could result in the production of a toxic gas. When cleaning, it's a good idea to put on rubber gloves to prevent your hands from drying out if you are using abrasive products. Clean the shower. Allow the cleaning product to sit for a few minutes on the shower walls and shower head. Spray cleansers designed specifically to remove soap scum work extremely well on tubs that haven't been cleaned in a long time. A cleanser designed to remove calcium, lime and rust is probably what you need for hard water areas prone to green and rust colored stains. On porcelain fixtures, never use abrasive cleaners, green abrasive scrub pads or steel wool as they will quickly dull the finish. Soak the shower head in water. Remove the shower head and soak it in vinegar overnight if it is clogged with hard water, building or soap scum. Or fill a sandwich bag with vinegar and secure it around the shower head with a rubber band. 
The next day, scrub the water holes with an old toothbrush to remove any remaining buildup. Once more, clean the shower's walls, faucet and shower head with a soft sponge. Then thoroughly rinse with the hottest water and pat dry with a towel. A dry towel can be used to shine the faucet. A shower curtain is also susceptible to mildew, so don't forget about it. A spray bottle filled with a solution of about two-third water and one-third bleach can be useful for removing mildew spots. You can also take it down and wash it in hot water with a little soap and bleach. Scrub the sink and counter area. With a small amount of cleaner, scrub away all the soap residue and toothpaste, making sure to thoroughly rinse your sponge as you go. Remember to clean your trash can, toilet paper holder, tissue holder, toothbrush holder, doors and other bathroom items. For cleaning out the debris from between the tap and handles, an old toothbrush or cotton swabs can be helpful. Never use the same rag or paper towel to wipe down the counter and sink area after cleaning the toilet. This can spread disease-causing germs from your sink to your counter. You can use a special rag that you use to clean only the toilet to avoid this. The fronts and tops of the cabinets and drawers should be cleaned. You should probably use hot, soapy water for this. If you are concerned about germs on these surfaces, mix some bleach into your soapy water. Similar to how you would wash a cup or bowl, wash your toothbrush holder. It should be cleaned on the inside with a bottle brush or sponge after adding a few drops of dish soap and filling it with warm water. Rinse it thoroughly to remove the soap. Scrub wipe the mirror down with glass cleaner or water. Wipe away any excess water with a towel or squeegee after using glass cleaner or water. After spraying the mirror with glass cleaner or water, dry it with a towel. A 50 by 50 solution of vinegar and water is also effective for cleaning glass and other surfaces. Clean the toilet's exterior. Wipe the outside of the toilet, beginning with the flush handle to avoid recontaminating it. Use a disinfectant cleaner soaked cloth to avoid recontamination it. Use a disinfectant cleaner soaked cloth. With a cloth and detergent or similar cleaner, thoroughly wash and rinse all exterior surfaces of the toilet bowl including the underside and flared base, the top and underside of the seat and lid and the hinges and their mounting area. Never forget to use paper towels or a cloth made specifically for cleaning the toilet. Paper towels should be thrown away after use. Please do not flush it. Flush after scrubbing the toilet bowl with a toilet brush. Coat the inside of the bowl with an angle neck bottle of a viscous acidic cleaner. Take extra care to cover the entire inside edge of the rim. Otherwise, it will run down into other areas. Use a toilet bowl brush to scrub the entire bowl, including under the rim, after letting the cleaner soak for at least 30 minutes. After the cleaner has been evenly distributed but thinned by the initial scrubbing, repeat the process. Finally, flush the cleaner away. To remove hard water stains from the toilet bowl, use a pumice stone. Scrub the stains gently with the pumice stone after dipping it in water. In the grocery store's cleaning department, look for a pumice stone. Mop and sweep the floor. Start at the area that is furthest from the door. Sweep up all the dust and debris you've already cleaned and let it settle on the floor. Then, mop the area with hot, soapy water containing bleach. To get rid of any soap residue that might be slippery, 
remember to thoroughly rinse the floor. The areas of your toilet bowl where it is attached to the floor should be thoroughly cleaned. This area is well known for being filthy. Remember to clean the base mouldings and baseboards because they frequently collect. Scrub small areas with an old toothbrush. Get a used toothbrush that you don't want and give it a thorough cleaning. Remove any excess toothpaste gunk that may have accumulated. Brush the toothbrush with a small amount of bleach or another counter-safe cleaning product. Effortlessly scrub. The toothbrush aids in getting into areas that are narrow or require very detailed scrubbing. Turn on the fan. By keeping your bathroom ventilated, you can reduce the likelihood of having to perform extensive cleanings. After you get out of the shower, turn on the fan to dry the bathroom and prevent moisture from clinging. You should also take the fan apart every now and then to vacuum the insides. Soak the blade in a 50 to 50 mixture of vinegar and water and then wipe down the blade and cover. This will assist in ensuring that the fan is operating at full capacity. After using the shower, clean it. Take time to wipe down the shower every time you take a shower to prevent mold and mildew from growing in between deep cleaning sessions. When combined with running the fan, this should keep mildew at bay in your bathroom. Keep it neat. Most of what we consider to be mess is actually just clutter. Put a hamper or even a cardboard box in your bathroom to collect dirty clothes if they accumulate. To keep your toothbrushes in order, use a toothbrush holder or a cup. To keep the area organized, store additional supplies in an old shoebox placed underneath the sink. Make use of the toilet brush. Even if the toilet doesn't appear dirty, minerals in the water can stain the bowl. So, brushing it down with a sturdy toilet brush on a regular basis is a good idea. Even if you only do this once a week, your larger cleanings will be much easier and less frequent. Rinse the toothpaste away. A bathroom can appear dirtier than it actually is due to toothpaste buildup and stains in the sink and even on the mirror. Make sure you clean up after yourself by washing your hands and rinsing the sink, then drying the bowl of the sink. Consolidate tasks by doing this while mouth washing for added dental benefit.